Since the late 60s, the government has been subsidizing housing. One byproduct of Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, is that there are more mortgage lenders. Critics say the government pushes people to buy homes even if they can't afford them. After the credit crisis of 2008, taxpayers picked up the check for those mistakes. Now, only a few years later, Wells Fargo offering mortgages with only 3% down. It is a decision that some say could spark the next housing crisis. Back with me now, my power panel, Gina, Mark, Harlan. So, Harlan, what do you make of this first and foremost? And, of course, the, the overarching image is President Obama getting ready to leave the White House. He's going to be renting a mansion yep. for two years. Uh, his daughter's finishing high school. Yep. But the idea, some people say, hey, the president's renting and yet the government's pushing tons of people who can't afford housing to buy. He may have a little bit of inside information. Um, you know, I really wonder at this point if we're at the, the bottom or the top of the market. Uh, you know, I'm talking to friends, some of them buying very, very nice houses, 100% finance, no joke. Uh, and this is the same still. sort of, spe still, this is the same sort of speculative, dangerous behavior that I think got us into trouble ten, you know, 10 years ago. So, Gina, we're looking at video right now of the house that the Obamas will be renting for the next two years till their daughter finishes high school. But this idea that people, citizens, are sometimes encouraged to overextend themselves and then taxpayers pick up the check. Are you worried that we have another house? I mean, Harlan just said he has friends that don't have to put any money down. Uh, what do you think of this? Uh, well, you know, I, I guess I think that home ownership in, in, in general sense is a good thing because generally speaking, when people have families and they have a, a mortgage and they have responsibilities, they tend to become more conservative and more fiscally responsible. I like that idea. There are dangers, though, and we have to watch those. But I find it particularly interesting that a president who supposedly makes only $200,000 a year is getting ready to rent a house that has to cost upward of $30,000 a year, I guess, unless unless maybe they're using the Clinton model where, uh, you know, one of them just becomes the Secretary of State and then they can go make expensive speeches Well, I was assuming, I mean, it's more than 10,000 it. square feet. I'm assuming that they're getting a break, yeah. but I don't know. The, the president makes $450,000 a year, so. No, she said 100. Okay. <laughs> well, this is troubling, you know what, Deirdre. But, but even ahead, so, Mark. how? Yeah. yeah. This is troubling. You know, the, the standard should be higher so that people who enter the marketplace for the first time have the confidence themselves that they know that they can afford what they're being, being put into. This is what happened during the Clinton administration when they opened the floodgates for people to have own, home ownership, as if that is the ultimate measure of the American dream and the government has to help the people achieve right. the American dream. That's not how it works. You it save, not a guaranteed you earn, right. you get a good credit score, and that's the way it should stay. Mark, Gina, Harlan, out of the way. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you for the thanks. conversation.